champ, congratulations. Thank you. You are hot coming into this tournament. You're obviously scalding right now. Talked about maturity and problem solving over the past couple press conferences. Talk about being one set down and then taking down the number one player in the world in the finals of a Grand Slam. Today I, I went into this match like it was any other match. I honestly wasn't nervous going in. Um, she was just playing great tennis and I knew today it was going to be one of those problem solving tough matches because she's a tough opponent so I'm happy, obviously happy with the result. When I was eight and I would come like three times, three years or three or four years in a row to see Arthur Ashe Kids Day and I was just watching, um, you know, players compete on this court. Then I, when I was 13, I think, or 14, when I played U.S. Open Juniors, I watched uh, the men's final that year. Um, so I had those envisions of myself then. And honestly, you know, the French Open moment, I don't know if they caught it on camera, but I watched Iga lift up that trophy, and I watched her the whole time. And I said, I'm not going to take my eyes off her because I want to feel what that felt like for her and that felt like craziness today lifting this trophy and it doesn't it hasn't sunk in and I think it probably will maybe in like a week or so. Um, I wasn't a fully developed player and I still think I have a lot of development to go um, at that moment and I think I, people put a lot of pressure on me to win and I felt that at 15 that I had to win a slam at 15 um, and I think that was you know, the, not the mistake, because uh, everything led to this moment, so there was no mistakes, but uh, that was like a little bit of the pressure that I was feeling, and now I just realized that I just need to just go out there and, and try my best. I mean, it was to the point where uh, she had the dream, but, you know, I don't know if she fully believed it. As, as a kid, you have so many dreams, and, you know, as you get older, sometimes it can fiddle away, and I would tell her, don't lose that dream. Um, honestly, I felt like I lost a little bit of the dream as this journey has gone, but I would tell her, don't lose the dream um, and keep believing in that dream and don't let the doubters uh, diminish that. Um, my grandparents, the biggest one my grandfather say, says is never say die. And yeah, I was telling myself that, um, you know, I wasn't going to give up after that first set. I come too far to do that. And my parents, my dad dreamed big and he was wearing a shirt today that said, imagine. Um, I don't know if he was wearing it during the match, but he showed me after the match. So I'm, I'm assuming he just, you know, the imaginations can come true you know it's not always just an image in your head you can make it a real a reality and my mom uh, she's I don't she just she just always re reminds me that I'm a person and I'm human and that you know with this tennis thing is just what I do but it's not who I am so I think that helped me today because I realized regardless if I came home with this trophy or not I'm still a human person and I still do a lot of good in this world for outside of the court so I think that reminded me I think in the past, I would just label myself as a tennis player, and I felt like if I didn't do good in tennis, it meant I wasn't a good person, and I, it took a lot of growth to realize the op opposite. And honestly, it's been a struggle. I used to put my tennis and compare it to, like, my self-worth. Um, when I would lose, I would think, you know, I was not worth it as a person. So having my parents always remind me um, that they love me regardless of how I do um, help me today. Now it goes concrete jungle where dreams are made of. So thank you. I just yeah, and I guess that that's that lyric is true. New York City is the city where dreams are made of. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank, thank you. you.